Mentalism, magic of the mind, is all about people and human connection. So if you're passing through Manhattan, there's no better place to meet the locals and tourists alike than at the crossroads of the world. Ever heard of Long Acre Square? No? That's because you know it as Times Square. We are standing in it right now, Times with an S, because in 1904, the New York Times, that's right, the newspaper, moved their main office to that building right there, one Times Square. Very famous indeed because that ball drops at the stroke of midnight, December 31st, to indicate the new year. Here's what I want everyone to do. I want you to think of a person, somebody famous, a man, a woman, athlete, politician, comedian, anybody you could ever meet. Do you know someone? And you're like, I would love to meet this person. I don't even know why. <laughs> think of this person and visualize. I like how he closed his eyes and smiled. He's like, yes, make it happen. <laughs> look this way at me, look this way at me, and imagine what they look like. There's no way you're knowing this. Think if it's a guy or girl, I can tell it's a guy. <laughs> Normally, right, if I meet you, I look you in the eyes. She didn't look me in the eyes. Count how many letters are in his first name just to yourself. She looked down <laughs> and you looked here. Her eyes moved and they went like this. Up, 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 up. Four letters, isn't it? Yeah. There's something there, a circle, a clock. Flavor Flav? <laughs> Cole Sprouts. Oh my God. Only person ever to That's think I want to meet Flavor Flav. <laughs> You're a lot of fun, appreciate it. Flanking Times Square to the east and west are 41 professional theaters, each with over 500 seats. And one of those houses, the Long Acre Theater, is home to the hit Broadway musical, A Bronx Tale, featuring Hudson Levera. They call me C. C. Is this your dressing room? Sure is. Nice. How long have you been doing the show, Hudson? On and off for about a year and a half. Wow, that's incredible. How old were you when you started? Nine years old. This guy's a Broadway pro at nine. <laughs> that's awesome. These are all your outfits? Yep, the costumes are all layered on. So we have a tank top, and we have this green shirt. We have this Yankees uh, kind of jersey. And then we have this big uh, j jacket that was actually made from scratch wow. by wardrobe. Do you get nervous still, or when you get out there, you're always having fun? I don't know about nervous, uh, but we're always excited for every performance. One of the things I've always loved about what I do is that I have the ability to make people happy. That's one of the cool things about acting, I think. First performed as a one-man show in 1989, then transformed into the classic feature film in 1993, and now reimagined for the Broadway stage. A Bronx Tale was written by the legendary Academy Award nominated actor, Chaz Palminteri. The show based a lot of it on your history, right? My life, yes. Your life. To what degree is he playing you as a young boy? I mean, is it, it's, it's all accurate, right? That's correct. It's incredible yeah. that this story still resonates to this day. It's one of those stories. It's about friendship. It's about family. Everybody can relate to that. And what do you feel like bringing it to Broadway means? Given that this is a Bronx tale, I mean, you could have this in Duluth, Minnesota, but this is a Bronx tale yeah. in New York on the stage. Well, I've, I've done 60 movies, and uh, the happiest I am is when I'm on stage. And Broadway, to me, is the ultimate. Now, there's obviously people that are representing the show that you love, that you yeah. lost, that made a huge impact on your life. That's correct. Think of someone who is no longer in your life Yes. Could be family, could be a friend, but all I ask is not to do somebody obvious. Someone that That's you true. lost in your life at some point that to this day is still missed. Do you have someone in mind? Yeah. Perfect. And then think of four other people that are alive and well. Write the name of the person that passed away. After you're done with this one, write the next name, the next name, but don't write any details about them. Wait till I go. I'm always thinking of doing so. <laughs> Okay. You got to mix them up. I want to get more of a feeling from you. Take those cards and please put them down on the table and spread them out. Each of these cards represents a person in your life to some degree, correct? That's correct. Did you think of all men? Yeah. I thought so. If it was a woman, you'd be a little more excited. Hold out your hand and I want to just feel a sensation. Don't say, but think here. Something with a P. One of the people you're thinking of is a guy named Phil, am I right? Yeah. I'm gonna move right over here. Something with an R. Russ, there's somebody named Russ. Right. This card right here, Mush. Mush. How did I do here? Mush. Russ and Phil, the person I point at. Just put your finger right on this one. This is the person I think has passed away. All these people are alive and well, am I right? This last person that passed away. I think somebody related to you, older, a man, some uncle, your uncle? My Uncle Ben. Your Uncle Ben. Think of Uncle Ben for a moment. I'm gonna isolate this. We're gonna put one piece right of Uncle Ben right in here. And what I want you to do 
is think back to Uncle Ben and hold out your finger for me. Put your finger right on here and see that little piece of paper in there with his name on it. And tell me if you feel the glass starting to move, a little vibration, a little something. Look right at it, focused. You can't really tell, but this is Chaz when he's in This is Chaz, nine out of 10. <laughs> That's cool, can I take you to my neighborhood? We can make some Let's money. go, let's go make some money. I'm in. <laughs>